How does email work? So that is the topic of this video. So as you know, email is a quick and convenient way to write and send someone a message, especially when compared to the old days of using the post office where you write or type messages on paper, putting it inside an envelope and then dropping it off at a mailbox. But now we can just write someone a message using our computer, tablet, or smartphone. But have you ever wondered how email works? I mean, how does email get from one device to another device across the world in a matter of seconds? Well, email is received and sent by using a couple of different protocols. And protocols are just a set of rules that a service follows in order to function. These email protocols are IMAP, POP3, and SMTP. IMAP and POP3 are used for receiving email, while SMTP is used for sending email. So the first step is just to open up our email. Now there are a couple of ways to open up and view your email. You can use an email client such as Outlook, Apple Mail, and Thunderbird, or you can simply just use your web browser. So in our example, we're going to use a generic email client for our email. And let's say for example that our email account is a Gmail account. The next step is to click on Compose, and then from here we can type in the email address of the person we want to email. So we will email tom at yahoo.com, and then we'll fill in the subject line, and then write the body of the message. And then once that is complete, we just press send. And after we hit send, our part is all done. The email is now going to go through the back-end process to deliver it to the recipient. The next step is that our email client will connect to our outgoing SMTP server. Because the SMTP server is responsible for sending emails. SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. But a good way to remember what SMTP does is by looking at the acronym SMTP and associating it with sending mail to people. Whenever you configure an email account, you have to set up the incoming and outgoing servers. So for example, if we look at our settings, the outgoing SMTP server for our email account is smtp.gmail.com. Now, even though email is a great and convenient way to send messages, in today's world, the number one problem to solve is securing an organization's email infrastructure. Email is vulnerable to fraud, such as phishing and spoofing, with many hackers impersonating and using non-authenticated domains. And they use these methods to trick someone to steal sensitive information, such as passwords, bank accounts, credit cards, and so on. And the best way to protect against spoofing and phishing is DMARC. DMARC is a way to make it easier for email senders and receivers to determine whether or not an email is legitimately from a trusted source. Now, setting up DMARC for your email can be complicated, which is why many administrators avoid doing it. But fortunately, there's Easy DMARC. Easy DMARC makes setting up DMARC with ease. It's an all-in-one email authentication and DMARC management platform to prevent and monitor fraudulent activity such as spoofing, email phishing, ransomware, and business email compromise. The platform provides advanced features such as DMARC Report Analyzer, Managed SPF, DKIM, Email Source Reputation Monitoring, and much more. With just a few clicks, EasyDMARC will guide you on how to set up your authentication journey. And then from your dashboard, you can view all your email authentication deployment and monitoring needs. So if you're interested in securing your email domain, you can start a free trial by clicking the link in the description of this video. So now, when our email reaches the SMTP server, the server will validate our email's details, such as the message and the attachments, to make sure it's in compliance with the email policy. And once that's done, it will place the email in the outgoing queue. So now, the Gmail SMTP server needs to figure out how to deliver the email to tom at yahoo.com. And to do this, it needs to find the recipient's email server for Tom's mailbox. So the first thing that the SMTP server looks at is at the domain name, which is yahoo.com. But as some of you might already know, computers don't understand names. They only understand numbers, such as IP addresses. But in order to convert yahoo.com into a number, the SMTP server will ask another server 
called a DNS server to resolve yahoo.com into an IP address. Because that's what a DNS server does. It converts domain names into an IP address. And once it has the IP address, it can locate the email server for yahoo.com and start a connection. And after the connection has been established, our email is broken up into smaller pieces called packets and then travels over the internet. And as it's traveling, it will go through several routers until it reaches Yahoo's email server. Then once it reaches Yahoo's email server, it's going to perform some security checks to make sure there's no viruses or spam in the email. And then once that is complete, it will place the email in Tom's mailbox. And then once Tom logs into his email, if he's using a web browser, he can view the email on the email server itself. Or if he's using an email client like ours, it will download the email to his computer. So for example, if we look at the incoming and outgoing servers in Tom's email client, we will see that he's using IMAP as his incoming email setting. Or if he was using POP3, it would look something like this. Now, just to clear things up, both IMAP and POP3 are used to retrieve incoming email, but there is a difference on how they do it. So for example, if an email client is using POP3, which stands for Post Office Protocol 3, it only downloads the contents of your inbox folder, which is where your email is. But IMAP does more. Not only does it download what's in your inbox to your device, but it also downloads and syncs your entire email folder structure. So whatever is in your inbox, sent items, spam, drafts, or any other custom folders that you have created, it'll download a copy to your email client and it will be synced to all of your other devices as well. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on how email works. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.